Hey guys, Final Cut Pro for the iPad finally got a new update. And in this video today, I wanna to show you what they introduced in Final Cut Pro 2.0, because in the last event, when they talked about that there will be new features coming to Final Cut Pro on the iPad, I was a bit suspicious and I wanted to see what is actually changing, what can you expect, what can we expect, and let's go over the update news. If you come here into the App Store, you will see Final Cut Pro for iPad, and here are the version history. You can click on that one and you will see the complete new stuff that is inside it now. So we have connect to Final Cut camera on iPad or iPhone to record up to four angles at once using live multicam. That was one of the features that was highlighted and how it looks is this one. That's the Final Cut camera app that you can also download now on the iPhone and on the iPad. And I guess because there was those questions, can we use this on different devices? At the moment, I didn't hear or see that there's another way how we can do this. So currently this functionality is limited to an iPhone or iPad. So, but on the iPhone and an iPad, you can basically install that, use it as a camera because you have a couple of more settings than the regular camera app. So it's basically in competition to the Blackmagic Blackmagic camera app. So this is how you can see it. And when you come into Final Cut Pro, the way you can use this new Final Camera app is either by creating a new project. So if we come here to new project and say new project, now we can say, Oh yeah, by the way, that's one of the other functions here on the location. You can now change and choose the location. If we come back here to the picture, so easily create and edit project and connect to external storage. That's the second point. So they introduced that, DaVinci Resolve already had that in the past, but you can now also have the location on an external SSD. I'm working now inside, so I say continue. And now in the next window, you see here, we have now live multi cam. And if I click on this one, it will open this new window here. And now I can connect with my iPhone, my iPads. My iPhone is at the moment recording. That's why I can't show you this. I also will make a proper tutorial video that will also come into the Final Cut Pro iPad Masterclass. So if you wanna know how to use this in Final Cut Pro, I will show you this in a separate video. But the idea is you connect your iPhone on the iPad here via that, um, that screen and stuff like that. And then you would actually see here the different cameras and you could use the iPad to control which camera recording, not camera and so forth and so on and so on. The cool thing is everything that is recorded is recorded on the device. So that means you will have it on your iPhone, for example. And then at the same time, it will also um, copy the stuff via wireless, boom, to your iPad. I already have a project open, so I will show you this. I did this as a test here, my test project, and that was recorded on my iPhone while I was testing the app. So, and then immediately I had here this footage in my Final Cut Pro. And the second way you can activate the live cameras is even inside of a project. So if you come up here to the second icon, those cameras, you can either activate the Pro camera, which is basically the same like the Final Cut Pro camera app, but already included into Final Cut Pro. And we also have the live multicam here. So if you click this, you will get this window again, can connect to the four devices and then work from that. So what else do we got? Dial in your exposure with shutter speed and ISO controls in the Pro Camera mode. This is basically everything that the Final Cut Pro camera app can do, can also now the Final Cut Pro camera that is included can do. So if I come here to the Pro Camera app, it has all of these settings. One setting that I noticed that is now added is for example, if I come here to the settings under tools, what we can do now is focus peaking. So I can see even here the focus peaking. Very interesting if you wanna use that. If you don't need that, you can turn this off. I would recommend if you work with this, have the overexposure indicator. So for example, here's the light that's burned out. You wanna see where something is burned out. Then also what I like to have is a grid just to see am I horizontal or not and so on. So, and all of those features are available in the Final Cut camera app and also in the Final Cut Pro camera app. So yeah, let's look at the next one. Enable focus peaking. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> That's what I was just talking about. Okay, enable fo focus peaking and ensure your footage is sharp while recording. And then polish your videos with 12 new color grading presets, six dynamic glitch backgrounds, and 20 soundtracks and eight basic titles and things. So I will show you now the last point that you see. Okay, what else is included? If you come here to Final Cut Pro, and you come here to the library, those are all the additional things that I have to be fair, Throughout the last year, this is the section in Final Cut Pro that got more and more features added. 
And also I expect that over the time and the next years, there will be more and more features added here as well. So for example, if we come here to titles, now you have a couple of basic titles that you see here, here on the top, before we just had one basic title and a couple of advanced. And every time there is something new, you will see this here with this little cloud icon and you can just download it to your iPad and then you can use it. If we come back, so what else did we got? We got some graphics and generation generators. And it's basically these kind of, let's download this, dot grid. That's one of the, uh, that's one of the glitch backgrounds that they now included. So if I click this and I click play, you see something like that. Not too fancy. To be honest, I'm not really sure if I would ever use those. Uh, you have to tell me if you would use them. All of them look kind of like similar to that. They, I'm not impressed, to be fair, okay? I don't want to trash the, the app and stuff like that. You can do a lot of things with Final Cut Pro on the iPad, but for calling it 2.0 and um, letting us know that this is such a major update, for me, it, it sounds like a minor update. Sometimes DaVinci Resolve on the iPad does more things in an update than, than this. Okay, what else? Maybe I'm, I'm wrong, right? So six dynamic glitch backgrounds, we just looked at that, 20 soundtracks. So DaVinci Resolve, uh, Final Cut Pro on the iPad included something very interesting here on the soundtracks. These soundtracks that you can have here, you can reuse them in all of your projects and your work in your YouTube. And they are so called, I forgot the name, but basically they are dynamic. That means you can put them into your timeline and however long your timeline is, you can just readjust them. They will automatically change their ending depending on how long your music or video is. That's the cool thing. At the same time, you have to listen to them if you find something that you really like. Most of the times I was not impressed. I haven't here the new ones you can see here is the same you can download them and then use them play around maybe you like them what i can say is if we look at this now it started maybe like with 15 or 20 soundtracks at the beginning and now we have a lot of more soundtracks so this library is definitely growing and if we go back to the notes that's it there is not much more for version 2.0 that we have we have the multicam live uh, camera stuff which is an amazing upgrade. I don't want to trash that, that's really good. But I expected a bit more and I want to explain you now why I think that. For me, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro, they are all these softwares on the desktop, on laptop, which I compare to each other. I know each of them is a little bit different, but I all put them into a category of, okay, if you really do want a professional work, then you use one of those softwares, right? And but here on the iPad, DaVinci Resolve is the same like DaVinci Resolve on the desktop. Yes, with a couple of limitations, also because of iOS, like the iPad OS and some of the stuff, but we figured out that you can have all of the tabs open. So that means you have color page, you have fusion page, you have, you have basically, it is the same software and you can do basically 80 to 90% what you can do on a desktop, even on an iPad from the get go. Like on every time there's a new update with DaVinci Resolve, you also get it. So I'm not trashing Final Cut Pro. If they would have announced it differently, if they would have said, okay, that is the, I mean, they tried to tell like you can start a project here and then later bring it to Final Cut Pro on the desktop, but we don't really have the opposite, like starting there and bringing it there. It's not completely true. There is actually, um, there is a way to do that. And I even explained that in the Final Cut Pro iPad Masterclass. So you can actually get projects from Final Cut Pro, but not officially. We have that not officially. And also the workaround does not work 100%. You have to really take in account what kind of effects and what kind of elements you use from Final Cut Pro on the desktop, because not all of them are supported here on the, on the iPad version. And that is my, that is my big thing. So, I always get asked like, what should I, like which software should I use? Should I use Final Cut Pro for the iPad or should I use DaVinci Resolve? So if you're a filmmaker like me and you used Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro, then this is a no brainer. You can use Final Cut Pro for a couple of maybe functions like the live drawing and play around. I have it too, right? But I also make videos and I have a course on it, right? I sell it, but like I sell the knowledge, not the software, but uh, DaVinci Resolve is the program that I use. But here comes the thing. There's a lot of content creators or beginner content creators who don't really care about the big program. For them, DaVinci Resolve and these kind of softwares are even too complex. They need something simple. Or like people always ask me, like, here's my iPad, right? I have the keyboard, I use the pencil. And for DaVinci Resolve, that is perfect. I would always say use the keyboard for shortcuts to optimize your workflow to be faster. But if you really just have the iPad, then Final Cut Pro is more 
is better optimized. You even have this jog wheel stuff and everything and it is just more thoughtful and the limitations here in that... Am I still recording? Did I just cut off my recording? I have to double check. Did I ever start it recording? <laughs> That's the funny thing. Yes, I did. Okay, back to back to this. You, so, one more thing I learned. If you're recording your screen on the iPad, don't turn it off. <laughs> your recording will stop, which is okay, which is good, right? <laughs> but yeah, keep that in mind. So, Final Cut Pro is, you can do a lot of things if you're just doing basic videos. And by basic, it's not like, you can do a couple of animations, you can remove backgrounds, and there is more and more what you can do with Final Cut Pro. So it's still a, a good software, but I would never compare it to DaVinci Resolve. That's why at the moment on my channel, I never really made a comparison video because for me, they are not in the same category. And why I make now this video and I talk about this, and uh, even if I, you know, I have a Final Cut Pro online course. So now telling people go to DaVinci Resolve is like, okay, I made this course and now I tell people go to DaVinci Resolve, but it's not true. If you just need a software that is just reliable, fast, you can do it. You have an iPhone, it works very seamlessly like you now see with the multi live view stuff. You come from Final Cut Pro and you love Final Cut Pro and you just want to have it on the iPad. I think for that it's okay. It's okay. You can do most of the videos, but if you need more advanced stuff and you want and you maybe even use DaVinci Resolve on a desktop, yeah, then there's a no-brainer. You go for DaVinci Resolve. That's the video from today. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe I am i didn't see something. Maybe I missed something. Maybe my interpretation is not completely correct. I'm also honest. I didn't watch any of the other YouTubers. That is just my feedback on that app and now seeing what they included. Like, I like that we have the progress. Step by step, it becomes better, but there is still a long way to compare it to a software like DaVinci Resolve. So I'm Daniel. If you're new to the channel, oh, if you're new to the channel, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding on the bang bang gong, and we'll see us in the next video. Bye.